Facebook's always lags behind just a second. <laughs> okay. Hi everyone, I have Savage Joy on tonight who has interviewed, how many candidates have you interviewed now? <laughs> Probably about 110. Wow, okay, yes, you have me beat. Over um, 100, definitely over 100. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna get this shared out to a couple places. And we're gonna talk about Oh, just the state of democracy and small subjects like that, right? Yep. <laughs> and, and particularly, um, we're going to get into, uh, I guess we'll call it the split within the Dem, Dem Enter, Dem Exit. Mm, I don't know. Well, it's kind of hard to define. The, the lines are a little blurry there, but we're dealing with some attacks from, I guess, I just call them the any blue will do with the little poop sign, um, cred credit to, to Pat the Burner on that one. Yeah. The Any Blue Will Do crowd. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. Live share to... Right. Share to CFAR, I'm attacking you. So, Joy and I both dealt uh, interestingly, with an attack from the same person within, what, two days, I think it was? Uh, yeah, probably within 24 hours. <laughs> I guess this person was just on a roll, <laughs> in a mood. Um, yeah. <laughs> something. Okay, so did you, did you get that? Um. Bear with us, everybody. We're, um. Just making sure we get this shared out everywhere. Okay. Yep, I am good to go. Okay. All right, and one more. Okay, so I would say we have in common uh, just trying to help promote uh, progressive grassroots candidates, wouldn't you say? That's sure. That's been kind of our role, um, you know, and uh, we met once at uh, Left Forum, right? Is that where it was in New York? Left Forum, I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So just recently, um, Joy and I both had this attack that happened to us and I just I thought of you because this person had recently been on your show and so I messaged you only to find out you'd experienced a similar thing so um, I'm, I'm not going to name the person um, and I want to say before we get started that I normally I try to really ignore petty arguments and don't want to air uh, you know disagreements publicly that happened, but the reason that I'm being vocal about this now, well, it's two reasons really. One is that this person is uh, pretty active in the election integrity, uh, election security movement. Um, I think has done a lot of really great work, and that, in fact, I said so that I respect their work. Um, and the other reason I wanted to say something about it was just because I think that we're going to see. Um, an increase of these kinds of attacks on anyone like us or organizations like what we do to promote progressive candidates that aren't taking the big money and that are up against the establishment Democrat candidates. Um, I think it's because they they just see us that we're splitting the vote. We're, we're destroying everything for them, which I don't understand. We make up what five percent. If whether if you vote third party or you don't support the establishment Dem, um, why don't they attack the Democratic Party for not offering people something to vote for? But so anyway, would you want to start and say like how how it sort of happened or what? Sure. Um, so I had this woman on. Um, typically, I do at least two to three hours. 
um, of research with every single guest I have on. Mm -hmm. um, this was something that was the first time I did this and the last time I did this where I had her on as a like a like a favor to someone and also asked someone else their thoughts and they gave me the go ahead. I did about a half hour of research and said, oh yeah, I can totally work with this. This is cool. Mm -hmm. So this person labels herself in um, an election integrity analyst. So to me, I'm like, okay, cool. And when you go to their, um, their social media, it's all about like voting machine irregularities and all these things. So I'm like, all right, good. Cause I talk about this stuff all the time. So right. let's get to the, you know, to the actual facts of it and everything. Cool. Bring it. So I have her on and the, I don't know how many of your viewers have watched my show, but something I do is continuously call out the Dems for, or the way they cheated in 2016. She professed her love to Hillary, um, which I can honestly say in over 200 shows has never happened. Um, apparently my face was pretty awesome at yeah, that it was. point. My <laughs> eyes bugged out to hear. Um, she, I was bringing up the millions of uh, provisional ballots that were giving given to Bernie supporters, which were found in boxes in California. I was talking about people whose, whose voter registrations were switched parties, even though they didn't request it and they couldn't then vote. Mm -hmm. I was bringing up all of these things and she was telling me just over and over, I've never heard of any of that. Right. And she refused to believe anything I was saying because she is pro dem. Right. So, and I've sent that this mm -hmm. person that report from that's uh, democracy lost from election justice USA. I've mm -hmm. sent that, you know, like here's all that information there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. People were providing her with receipts left and right. I was like, look, I was at Occupy DNC. I marched there for six days in 100 degree heat. And we marched like eight hours, at eight miles a day, sun up to sun down and then some. And this wasn't for our health. We were doing it because they were cheating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why thousands of us rallied like that. And you're taking that away from us mm -hmm. and you're saying none of it ever happened. You're implying we're just sore losers. Like it was the exact talking points from, you know, yeah. the shills, yeah. the neo-libs who just, you know, fuck Bernie, this and that. Mm -hmm. When that's, it's not even about him. It's about democracy. If right. your vote exactly. doesn't count, what the fuck is the point in anything? Right. And that's and, why, yeah, that's why yeah. it's so hard. And that, that's why we're talking about it because it, this is within the election integrity community. And there are things I'm not going to go into all of right now. I may talk more in the future, but um, there are a lot of really great people working in, in that effort. Um, I think a lot of them uh, are maybe stuck kind of in 2004 and what happened in Ohio. Um, they're just kind of stuck pre-Democratic uh, primary 2016. And their candidate was Hillary, and so they just didn't see it. And if you you know if you were just consuming um regular media you wouldn't know because i remember that's that was the the point for me and i'm sure for a lot of us where we really realized exactly how much the news was not bringing us the news because i was following it very closely online and then i thought well for sure they're going to cover all this what's going on in arizona nothing mm -hmm. crickets so yeah. that was a real eye opener so I guess if, if, you know, but there are a lot in the election integrity community that are any blue will do. And I think that's very dangerous because you, we can't have that kind of a bias when we're talking about our votes. 
Yeah. Right, and I think one of the most dangerous things is that any time you use that stupid ass hashtag, you know, uh, vote blue no matter who, mm -hmm. they see that and they're like, "Cool, this means we can continue rigging elections. This means we can continue shaming progressives. This means we can continue." watering down bills or not passing them at all mm -hmm. this means that we will have their vote regardless we don't have to change we don't have to do shit we right. already have their votes that's right. what that means whereas if everybody actually you know had the guts to say look we're not gonna settle we have the upper hand right now we're the ones that are gonna tell right. you look you want our vote this is what you're going to do. You're going to start right. listening to your constituents. Mm -hmm. But too many people don't have the guts to do that. They'd rather risk, you know, Joe Manchin or people who wear blackface just because they have a D next to their name. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'd rather risk that because they're blue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really ignorant. And, you know, yeah. looking back at the show I did with this woman, I, you know, I was reading the comments and everyone was cracking up at my facial expressions and they're like, Joy, just hold it in, just yeah. hold it in. It was the whole time I was like, oh, fuck, oh my God, oh my God. And it like, was one of those, like, you're so, <laughs> yeah, you were so stunned, you, you just didn't know what to say, I could tell. I, I was just like, why am I in this position? I've yeah. been so careful. Um, mm -hmm. But... The, you know, and I could have just absolutely, like, destroyed her the day after. But mm -hmm. I let it go, and I'm like, you know what, I'll let it go because she does do some good work. Right. As far as, you know, with voting machines and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll let it go. But then, so I'm on real, or I'm on um, Twitter the one day, and she has all these screenshots of mine. Now, she follows me on Twitter and Facebook. She did not tag me. Yeah, me too. And she's like, this is, you know, Joy from Real Progressives. And she had, she had screenshots of me back to 2016. Like, are you stalking me? I just got Twitter in December. So she had to be, like, scrolling through my Facebook. And she was like... She hates Hillary, and I was so excited to go on her show. And then she started telling me, you know, the DNC cheated, and, you know, and she was just straight up bashing me and real progressives. And I was like, hell no. So I saw this by chance. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, you know, I was like, why couldn't you at least tag me in this so I could defend myself? And she's like, mm -hmm. you're right, I should have tagged you. So this is going back and forth. And meanwhile, there are literally hundreds in this thread by now. It's just going and going and going. And people are like, you know, I mean, to me, that's jacked up because, first of all, I gave you an hour of free airtime. Can you not come at me like that or at least have a debate, not go through my page and find screenshots of how I just hate Hillary and I could have told you that. You didn't have to look through screenshots. Just ask me. I'll tell you I hate her guts. You know? And that's why I was like, damn, like, she is straight up slandering me. Then she was going through. She was putting words in my mouth. She uh -huh. was literally yes. lying yep. about things. And you came in and you were like, look, it's going to be long. I'll PM you. Because you wanted to have my back. And RP and just be like, look, here's you know, we could go about it this way. And then, then Oh, well, no, actually, I didn't see that. I didn't see it until after. I just messaged you. I didn't even know that was going on. I just knew that because you had her on the show and because of your facial expressions. Oh, 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 oh. I figured you'd be, you know, interested to know. I, and plus, I was just so flustered after. I think it was about an hour this one day that this argument with her was going back and forth. And like I said, normally I just would just ignore something like this or, you know, block the person or just walk away. But I just couldn't believe that it's this person that's supposed to be a professional um, acting this way. And um, so initially, actually, I will I would like to read a little bit of how this started. Um, I just because I knew because of her on your show, I knew that. 
she didn't seem to understand, you know, our, our perspective literally didn't know what, what we knew or about. Or be willing to understand. Well, right. That's, that's the kicker there. So, um, at the very beginning, um, I was, it started out, she thought I was, she mixed me up with uh, someone else several times. Um, wait, this is longer than I remembered. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. I said, I would love to, this is, I started it because she had said something on Twitter about she couldn't believe that there were people out there like us, I guess. I don't, I, I don't know what she means exactly by that, but um, I said, I would love to have a discussion about this for candidates with a contract Facebook page. I would also love to ask you more about what you've uncovered about voting machine vendors and some election officials and the bribery, because she's done some great work with that, too. And honestly, yeah, lots of great work. Um, and then I said, uh, I was baffled by your response. Um, oh, that was, okay, to, uh, see, but maybe you really don't know. I would like to have a constructive civil conversation about this if you're willing. It could be private or I can interview you, you know, which do you prefer? She says, I'm not going to be interviewed about live about something I don't know, much less by someone who called me a bootlicker, exclamation point. Happy to have a civil discussion. Here. And I was, I, I responded with, um, I'm sorry, bootlicker? Who, where did I call you a bootlicker? Because this wasn't me. I had, I had no idea. And so she, um, she responds with, I am very concerned by the hero worshipping of Assange. And then she says, oh, I thought that was you. No. And I said, uh, no, not my, really my style, especially not with an election integrity activist I respect. So even though she started off like that, I, she says, well, you both have nice side parted hair. Okay. Was she um, talking about me? No, somebody. I'm not going to name other people. It was someone else in oh, a, okay. the, a thread. Maybe she had been on your thread. I don't know. Another oh, person okay. that was giving her the activist <laughs> trouble. Um, so I said, no, you know, not my style. And I said, Assange is a different story. They're yes related. And I said, I think we could just talk about the DNC putting, the thumb, putting thumb on scales for Clinton. And she says, I can see I need to do an article on the primaries. Um, and let's see, she's talking about the woman that called her a bootlicker. And I said, sorry about that. Yeah, I, was, I, don't, I said, I don't want to be nasty with anyone in the election integrity community, even though I find the any blue will do mentality among the majority of them very problematic. She says, we all struggle with our biases. I have them like anyone else. Um, but something typo here, concerns about the primaries, I said yes, the media has a lot to do it. Then we get into, she says, it is any blue is better than Trump, not any blue will do. I have a serious problem with Bernie or bust. Um, I do understand and do suspect Democrats may have rigged some elections. Uh, let's see. Let's see. She's talking about Hillary. As to Hillary, the Republicans have thrown so much propaganda at her that when I hear more insults hurled by Bernie supporters, it makes me really angry, rightly or wrongly. Most people don't provide citations. I'm not an expert on Sanders or Hillary, frankly. But when I hear people say she's as bad or worse than Trump, it infuriates me. Um... And then she starts talking about kids in cages. She would not have put kids in cages. And she would have not be assaulting LGBTQ rights or suggesting that the media should be killed. Okay, so I sent a clip of Hillary talking to Chris Matthews in 2008, saying she wasn't for gay marriage. She says, no one says Bernie... Uh, no one says Bernie would have been as bad as Trump. I have never once heard that. But Bernie supporters say that about Hillary, and it will likely cost them. It may attract MAGAs. Because Bernie supporters and Trump supporters have both made this into a, a hero-worshipping thing, almost like a religion, it freaks me out. 
That is how far left joins with far right, because they claim centrist Democrats are worse, and that pisses me off and scares the F out of me. Um, we may be better off discussing, not discussing Hillary or Sanders if you want to discuss the machines. I will look at the primary soon. And then she sends me, you would probably be interested, I know you, you're, you know everything about Bernie. There was a clip that, it was her response to my Hillary yeah. clip being against gay marriage. And it was something where an interviewer asked Bernie, this is old, if there was a gay rights proposal for job discrimination, general harassment, would you support it? I mean, this is, I don't know what this is. It's some like little newspaper clipping. And Sanders said, probably not. When you're dealing with priorities, there are hundreds and hundreds of young kids in the city. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's something I hadn't heard of, but I don't, I think we all yeah, know. Yeah, that was, uh, the, the girl who released the, the damaging video of him, you know, dancing in the, at the table at the USSR, how that, the short oh. video that just came mm -hmm. out. It's the, the woman who released that, who expected this big thing, cropped something like mm -hmm. half what Bernard said, and that's from that. Ah, uh, I figured you yeah. would know. Okay, well, yeah. she says outdated, just like this. Okay, am I, correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't Bernie like in gay pride parades in like the 70s and stuff? Or yeah, even sooner? he passed a uh, Vermont gay pride yeah. parade in 1980. Right. Okay. No, so and she didn't come around till uh, to gay marriage until 2013. Right. So, so saying that he made one comment in one place that might not be completely, uh, I don't, you know, on one, you know, it's nitpicking to me, and it's clear we know that Bernie has been for uh, LGBTQ rights for decades right i mean she she can if if we wouldn't block each other i sent her the video of when bernard literally bitches out his co on the senate floor and was like did you just say like and he goes ham on this dude because he said you know he doesn't want any uh Oh, the home, he, when he says the thing in the military, yeah, we don't want any. Right, right. Yeah. And Bernard's like, did you just yep. say, I want to ask him right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you just say, like, on the mm -hmm. Senate floor. He, mm -hmm. And this was decades ago. He right. doesn't have ground. So this right here, I mean, for someone, yeah, not a very strong argument here to send that back. I was like, yeah, okay. So anyway, I said that the far left joining with far right, what we call it, is really about populism about people's rights over corporations, and the Democratic establishment fears this joining of forces as much as the Republican establishment. Um, and then she says, hell yes, I fear that joining. It is one of the things that brought us Trump. Uh, you implicitly, this is where it gets really nice, you implicitly admit it by saying you would rather have Trump than Hillary. Keep in mind, at this point, I have said no such thing. She told Whatsoever. me that too, and I said, "Can I have the receipts?" Yeah, really. I've never right. said that. Right, right, Can I right. have the receipts? Um, that is why so many centrist Democrats can't stand Sanders, because you made something up in your head that people aren't saying. That's my problem. Um, it is not her position now, and you know she would not be going out of her way. To under my uh, LGBTQ. Okay, same with Sanders. The clip is 20 years old. They're both outdated. No, sorry. You lose that argument. They're both out of context. No. <laughs> okay, now this is interesting. I have, didn't take the time to look into this yet. She did say that Hillary voted against HAVA, the Help America Vote Act, and Bernie didn't. So that's something to look into. I don't know. Um, okay, so Hillary gets one point, maybe. Um, I'm going to look into that more. I'm yeah, honestly I don't, not I don't sure know. what it is. I mean, I trust if she, well, never mind. I might not trust what she does. I'll look it up. <laughs> um, okay. And then, so she says, then look at the clip, the, the what she said about Bernie. And she says, your guy isn't perfect. Stop treating him like a god and everyone else like dirt, and he will have a better chance. Now, first of all, you and I differ a little bit here, and I'm in no way anti-Sanders. I was a huge Bernie supporter. 
Um, and I was in Philly DNC week. I'll never forget seeing the Bernie delegates crying in the bathroom. It was just heartbreaking. Um, I am not a gung ho Bernie like supporter now. Um, if he were to run again, I would consider voting for him, depend on who else is running. But I'm definitely not against him. But basically, she's well, we see later in this, she admits that she was having multiple conversations at once. So I guess she was confusing me with other people or something. Um, so my guy is Bernie, uh, apparently. Still, uh, I said progressives do not like Hillary because she supports big moneyed interests over people. Um, your guy, here she goes again, missed the vote on Pasca sanctions. Very convenient, always an excuse to let Putin off the hook. Here we go. <laughs> I said I have never... I'm, I'm still waiting for Putin to let us know why he let Bernard lose the primaries. Because they're so <laughs> tight. And right. he just let us lose. That's jacked up. Come right. on, Putin, what's up with that? <laughs> uh, I, anyway, I said I have never treated Bernie like a god. I was a very gung-ho Bernie supporter, but... And she says, well, that's good. And she says, many do. Cue the Russia is just fine monologue. I said, I'm a Russiagate skeptic, yes. I believe in facts and evidence, and it's just not there. Okay, here we go. On and on. Um, but the best part is when she says she's no longer a Schumer fan. Oh, she didn't know about Steny Hoyer. And that whole thing with uh, Levi Tilleman. And just, again, it's another illustration of like what, what they will do to keep down the progressive candidate, uh -huh. right? Yep. Um, and uh, then she just starts in, okay, then you're giving a wink and a nod to Trump zero tolerance policy. Oh, she's talking about the kids in cages again. Um... The far left helped Trump 100% after Hillary won the nomination. I hope he loses because if his followers believe Democrats are worse than the GOP, then they have no moral compass. Um, I said, I do not join hands with Trump. I said, I understand why some voted for him. Um, and then she kept going on about the kids in cages, and I sent her... Um, a link to uh, Obama has deported more people than any other president, right? Yeah, it's kind of like the drone strikes. We they don't want to hear about that, right? Ooh, you better not touch Obama. Mm -mm. Ooh, yeah. I know she got pissed. <laughs> and it's just you joined with Trump by claiming Democrats are monsters, worse than he is. I'm like, I did. <laughs> um, I said, where was the media showing all the people Obama deported? Um, it's theater. I said, my focus has largely been on media, media colluded with Clinton campaign, and I say again, I never joined with Trump. Um, anyway, and eventually, though, I ended up, you know, I sent her a picture of um, kids in cages, and it was from 2014. And her response to that was, that's um, what about ism? Yeah. No, that's um, a fact. Right, and it's also called hypocrisy, right? Um, oh, God, and then she gets into the whole, the threatening the, the media. Um, Trump's attacks in the media were one of the first things that told me he wants to be a dictator. Um... Yeah, here's what you no. Know, she said, "What aboutism? Just like a MAGA." So now we've did, we've gotten into the pretty much then straight up name calling. I don't think she understands what what aboutism is. Um, that's what she's doing. Like, mm -hmm. if a Dem, are you gonna vote for the Dem? What if the Dem is blah blah blah? Are you gonna vote for them? What about that's what what aboutism is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. I know, I know. So, then she, she started a Twitter, uh, I guess a, a question thing, which I shouldn't have joined in, but I, at this point, didn't know it was going to get so bad. Um, uh, no one believes you are, feel free to chime in, no one believes you are real. 
And I said, I am not a Trump supporter, but you know that already. I said, I will respond. You are stating absolutes about me that are not true. It's part of the problem with Dems not getting it. Um, and she says, you are an indirect Trump supporter he, by sa saying he's better than a centrist Democrat. Again, I have never said any such thing in this whole entire conversation. So I don't know where she's getting it from. So that's what I started. I said, you are an indirect Trump supporter by supporting neoliberal Dems. Okay. Every, any blue will do person, please. Yes. Okay? Yes. This is why we have Trump, right? Oh, that's right, because when this first came up, I um, shared that video where he is talking with Robert Shear, the editor of Truth Dig. And they were, yeah, that's a great mm -hmm. conversation. Um, I said, I never said he's better than a centrist Democrat. Um, but here we go. Do you think he's better than Hillary Kamala? And I said, I guess she's talking about Obama. Uh, then we go into more about the kids in cages. I mean, this just not went on. about -ism. Do you think he's better than... Look, bitch. Yeah. He, he's in office, okay? He is there. You can go back and say if you voted this way. And, oh, my God. Oh, okay. Here it is. Here it is. So she asked me. She says, I voted for Hillary. When Obama got the nom nomination, I... I voted for him. I'm mad at him for, for failing to address election integrity and lying about it. Then she says, that wasn't my question. This is what she says. Do you think Hillary is worse than Bernie? I was confused because I'm like, what is she, why is she asking that? And I said, Hillary worse than Bernie? Yes, absolutely. Um, and she said, please include that on the timeline. Or I guess the Twitter thing. People don't believe believe it. Do you know lots of people who feel that way? Where are they? And I said, yes, a lot. And then I repeat, you're asking specifically about Bernie versus Hillary. I think that was pretty clear during the primary. And what happened was later, and I'm not just going to keep going with this, but um, I could go on. It's, it's insane. It, but in the end, she finally realizes that she misspoke and what she meant to say ask me was did I think that Hillary was worse than Trump but she right. wrote Bernie and I asked her twice back about it so the whole rest of the time because she's misunderstood that and confused me with someone else at least once if not twice she starts just flipping out on me I mean flipping out like your whataboutism false equivalencies uh, deportation equals separating kids from parents and indirect defense of Trump. I mean, just on and on and on. Um, I would have voted for Bernie. You did not vote for Hillary. Check effing mate. But, okay, well, here's the thing. She refuses to acknowledge. Trump had never been in office a single day. Trump was all talk at that point. Right. He was all talk. We have decades of proof of Hillary being a warmonger and being a disgusting, abhorrent person. That's what yeah. we had of her. We yeah. have nothing on him except he sucks as a businessman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have shit. Oh, how about now. the, we came, we saw, he died? The Gaddafi <laughs> thing? Yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Right. That's great. Yeah. But she says, yep, classic MAGA. So she's calling, calling me names here. There are always fine people on both sides, aren't there? False equivalencies. Yes, both sides have done bad things, blah, blah, blah. And I just said, look, you have this idea of who I am, and you've thrown all kinds of names and labels at me. Um, even after I tell you no, that's not what I support. Um, and she says, if... If I told you your candidate was worse than Trump and kids in cages, you would be furious. And that's when I, just, I said, when did I say that? And so finally, at this point, I'm being pissed off. And I said, can you read? Um, and she said, that wasn't my question. Oh, I meant Trump. And at this point, I just responded. I said, oh, Jesus. And I just left. And I never answered another thing. 
Um, and she has since gone in um, an email thread and addressed me there, and I'm not responding. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it, you know, that's her mistake. Um, I told her she was unhinged. Um, that's her mistake, that she confused me with someone else from, from the beginning. Um, and then to name call and all this other stuff. I mean, it's just, where do they think they're, they're going to get with that? Like to just attack people in the progressive movement that are refusing to back the establishment down. Where, what do they think that's going to do? Well, that's the thing. It, it really is a repeat of 2016 in, in several ways. And one of them is you suck. We hate you. You're worthless. You like Trump more than anyone else. You mm -hmm. hate Hillary. You hate us. You're ugly. You're mean. I hope you kill yourselves. And then when it comes time for November, you better fall in line and vote for our candidate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not how it works. You, like, I've been told, go kill myself. Like, I've been spit on. I have, like, I've been through it, as have many other Bernie supporters. And mm -hmm. for you to tell strong people, strong independent people, fall in line, mm -hmm. yeah, you just fucked yourself over, because now I'm really not going to mm -hmm. obey you. Mm -hmm. you My know, favorite... You keep. My favorite vote shame, like my favorite vote shaming that I got was actually from Michael McFall, the former ambassador to Russia, on Twitter. Spent three nights trying to vote shame me and in, into in voting for Hillary. I'm not kidding. I couldn't believe he responded. Because Russia loves Hillary. Yeah. Well. So I mean that. Yeah. That was my. Um, that was my favorite one. But yeah, you hear it all the time. I just don't understand what. I mean, take they should take that all that anger and direct it at the Democratic Party and say, you know, because they're getting mad at the the people and the voters for for what not voting for. I would no more vote for Hillary than I would vote for Mitt Romney. And That's the thing they what? refuse to. How many times do we say, "Give me something other than she's a woman and she's not Trump. Mm -hmm. Give me something." Mm -hmm. Nobody could ever give us anything. Mm -hmm. So when you're shaming us for not voting for a woman who lied about Bosnian sniper fire, who literally put national security at risk, who, you know, who is married to a rapist, you know, when you're shaming us mm -hmm. for not voting for this person, you sound like the opposite of a humanitarian mm -hmm. you sound psycho mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. people love to blame those of us who you know didn't fall in line when 80 million people stayed home because mm -hmm. they were that uninspired yep. with two garbage candidates they were that uninspired right. but yet they blame people that if they did math they would know it wouldn't have changed anything anyway. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. love how they're presumptuous that, like, if people didn't vote, if Jill wasn't running, they would have voted for Hillary. Oh, I can bet you they wouldn't have. Right. And what about the, I, I always mention the 12% of Bernie supporters did vote for Trump. But but why is that? I mean, it's it's the economy, stupid. I mean, I think it's pretty, pretty obvious in, in those... Yeah, I mean, when you go to, let's say, West Virginia, and you go there, and the only people who went there were Bernie and Trump. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are losing their homes. They're scared their children to have no food. They're mm -hmm. losing their coworkers left and right without pensions and stuff. They're just getting fired when they walk into work. And somebody comes and tells you, hey, I'm going to save your job. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are, what your beliefs right. are. I don't give a shit. You <clears throat> right. don't vote for that person because you love mm -hmm. your family. Yep. And that's the, the only hope you have left. But it's, so, it's, an, it's an elite snobbery. And again, it is. it's in here. Um, I mean, didn't Hillary say something not too long ago about, well, the, the up and coming, the, the good areas actually voted for me? I can't remember what the exact quote was mm -hmm. or where it was, but yeah, uh, yeah. and it's like, uh, like in other words, yeah, shitty, but West Virginia, those people don't matter. 
And I think, you know, whether she says basement dwellers or basket of deplorables, how do you expect people to... Basement dwellers. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I just thought to myself, okay, yes, what's happening at the border is horrible. Um, I have a hard time believing that all these things that are, are happening um, just recently started. Um, I think it's yeah. about the media's attention on it. Um, what, so we were to believe all the, the border patrol people that are doing these things that that just started because of Trump. Um, and that there's this, um, there's just kind of this attitude of this like moral superiority, like, okay, lady, have you driven through, um, you know, half the country is in poverty. Have you driven through, or no, those are the flyover states. Have you seen what some kids are, are going to bed hungry? People are suffering. And it's just this look down your nose at them and shame the people that, you know, would vote, wouldn't vote and support their candidate that is just going to continue to enact these neoliberal policies that lead to what we have now. And I guess, is that the disconnect there maybe that, do they still not really understand that? I mean, these are smart, educated people that should be able to understand. Cognitive dissonance is a huge part of it. But that's what is frustrating to me because, yes, I'm a Bernie supporter. Sometimes he infuriates me. Sometimes I want to shake him. I do not, in no way do I think he's perfect or, you know, he's human. He's mm -hmm. human. He is fallible. He, I disagree with him on shit. Sometimes I want to shake him. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, I don't want people to be hungry anymore. I want everyone to have health care that actually works and is affordable. I want people, to, I want humanity just to actually start surviving and being happy and loving and things like that. Like, this is what I want. And I don't think it's as utopian as people like to think it is. So when people shame me for wanting the mm -hmm. things I want mm -hmm. and call them ponies and shit, like, that, to me, does not get my vote. That, yeah. to me, is so disrespectful, so sanctimonious, so privileged, yeah. that yes. you're going to sit there and be like, you know what? How dare you want people to have health care? How right. dare you want them to have a living wage? You know, Hillary's such this, like, you know, female goddess and everything, but, like, you know, look what she did to the women in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Do you think mm -hmm. it shaming women mm -hmm. is that how you push someone up mm -hmm. i mean you know it's it's just it's so disgusting so like at the end of the day my concern is not whether somebody likes bernie that's not my concern my concern right. is not whether or not somebody votes for bernie yeah i hope they do but that's not my my point my point is that i want someone who's going to bring these platform ideas, bring them to fruition, fight for them, be genuine about them. That's mm -hmm. what I want. And he's the only one doing it. So that, I mean, that's what it is. So, um, so before I forget this part, I'll, you made me think of a section I did say to her. Um, so I said, Dem's attitude and attacks like what you've done to me today are exactly why your party will keep losing. Go read Listen Liberal and see why the Clintons and other third-way Dems are exactly why we have Trump. People are suffering, but you'd rather look down on them. Um, and she says, your views are scary. You don't support the wall, but indirectly you do because you will help re-elect Trump if a centrist wins. You want to burn it all down. Good luck. And um, I said, yes, anti-war, pro-Medicare for all, basically a Green Party platform. So, I'm such an asshole. <laughs> no, I think an asshole, sorry for the language, everyone, expects someone voting for all those good things to prop up their pro-war, anti-Medicare for all, Clinton agenda, for-profit prisons, big oil, big pharma, sorry, party that thinks everyone just owes them votes. And then she just responds with pot, kettle, and your what about -ism. So, yeah. She. <laughs> so, I don't, I don't know. But it's disappointing. And um, I don't know. That just can't be going on. 
has to be called out, especially within the election integrity community. Um, and I brought up that uh, about Stacey Abrams, that mm -hmm. she's now joined um, uh, near Cap. Ten yes, Cap, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and didn't see a problem with that. Doesn't understand why that's a problem. So she wouldn't. No, right. I mean, it's. I think it's very. As much as you know, the word privilege gets overused. I think that no, this is what the is. epitome of privilege. Yes, it is absolutely. You, I mean, anyone who feels they are entitled mm -hmm. to our vote is yes. privileged. Yes, exactly. this is supposed to be democracy. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I don't understand why people like her that are so pissed off that she lost. Why don't they go at the mainstream media who said she had a 98% chance of winning? Well, because see, that, that's another thing. These, these people, they really were shocked. They were surprised. And well, that's why a lot of people stayed home. Because they were mm -hmm. like, well, I don't like her, so I don't want to have to vote for her and compromise you know, my integrity if she's going to win anyway. So I'm just going to stay home. <laughs> and because they were so sure she was going to win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, MSM needs to take responsibility for that, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because they kept saying, you know, for months, oh, he's never going to win. He has, I mean, it wasn't even 50-50. It was, like, literally, like, 97. So... Right. But I wasn't, I mean, were you surprised? I wasn't surprised no. in the least bit. That we were at no. Occupy DNC. No, yeah. I wasn't mm -hmm. surprised. No, but even just saying, well, I'm in North Carolina, and you're in Pennsylvania, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I actually drove through Pennsylvania quite a bit because my daughter goes to a camp up there. And, I mean, you, you see the Trump signs everywhere. I mean, and it, it was just like watching um, them not covering the election integrity stuff. It was like or election security issues that were going on. It was like two different realities, you know, what the television was saying and what was really going on in the real world. And I guess they just, they, they're in their own bubble and they don't see it. But, um, so I wanted to sort of take this a little step further because obviously this person is a very extreme, any blue will do kind of person. Um, but I think we have, you know, we have different sort of slivers and I'm just curious how this is going to go going forward because we recently, and I'm not going to get into names because it doesn't matter, but there was another Twitter thing that happened the same week. Everybody was in a mood, apparently. But, you know, if someone decides that they're going to vote for, say, Gillum or whoever, and they decide that that's the lesser evil, while I don't agree with that, I'm not going to attack them for it. So what I'm seeing, though, is in the other direction, the people that do decide to do that, they're also attacking uh, us, the people that are refusing to do that. I guess it's the Dem yes. enter versus Dem exit um, right. argument. So I just think, I don't know, that, that shit has to stop. I mean, I, you've got to respect people's right to vote the way they want to vote. And I, I don't understand the anger and why they think they can do that. When right, you, absolutely. If it, it, I've never vote shamed anyone. I've written articles about how destructive it is, and and just how abhorrent it is. Do now, as far as a candidate, I look at primaries, mm -hmm. and who did they side with in the primary? I think that says a lot yes. about like who they, they are as a candidate. But as far as you and I, like people like that. How does the way you voted affect me? It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's none of my business. You don't even right. have to tell me who you voted for. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, when I, I mean, when I see burners do shit like that, it makes me cringe. And I mm -hmm. want, you know, and I just say, look, take it back. Stop name calling. Stop, you know, being, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stop instigating stuff. So, you, you look bad mm -hmm. and you're making mm -hmm. us look bad. Right. This is, it's, you know, it's fueling these stereotypes that like mm -hmm. we're just out to attack everyone when those of us who do it the correct way just put receipts and, you know, at the most mm -hmm. use sarcasm or mm -hmm. something. But there, I don't do name calling and stuff like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's I think it's, it's best in most cases to just 
ignore it as much as possible. But, um, I mean, we can't, we can't deny the fact that there are definitely efforts in social media to, to fuel this divide. Um, oh, I was actually called a Russian bot twice last week, too. <laughs> I don't oh, know God. I, I get at least a few times a day. I get But, that. I mean, you can look at my Twitter profile. It's pretty, you know, I've got pictures. It's, it doesn't look anonymous, you know. I, I don't know. I said, I'm going to do one of my shows like, hello, my real name is Fitlana. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I always joke because uh, my one, like, a mom friend here where I live is actually Russian. <laughs> but she voted for Hillary. Anyway. Um, <laughs> I, I think she regrets that vote now. But anyway, uh, so yes, I am a total Putin puppet, apparently. Well, I think it's interesting that Bernard's the only one who hasn't met Putin uh, Hillary has a bunch of pictures with him, and she's had, she has different hair, different clothes, and all of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been numerous times, and so did Bill. Mm -hmm. um, and why? I don't know. People are just, it's like, it's become the new, like, thanks, Obama. It's like, thanks, Russia. Like, <sighs> I think it just shows exactly how much the media has whipped people into a frenzy and I don't know if you have this sense but I feel like now when I'm talking to someone like this person we were discussing sorry without her here I gave her the opportunity to talk and anyway um, you know I think talking to those people is no different than trying to talk to the right-wing Fox viewers 10-15 years ago and they're just, you can't, you can't, they immediately resort to name calling or quickly and you just can't reason with them. And I think you just have to look, I mean, MSNBC is following the same formula that Fox News did. So I guess that's what it is. It's the media. Rachel Maddow thinks that climate change is going to be controlled by Russia. She literally said, do you know how that scary is that they can affect the temperature? Right, because they were going to shut off the grid in, in the yes. grid store somewhere. Oh yeah, God. I heard someone say all she needs is the, the, the Glenn Beck, you know, the pegs on the wall and the red thread to... I don't know. Oh my God. So, but... That's what's scary. Mm -hmm. That yes. is terrifying. That is very scary. I and find, the fact that people love her. Yeah. Right. Well, I used to watch her. I to admit, I did. Well, I did three years, up to three years ago. But then when she had Bernie on, and she legit laughed in his face, like literally goes, ah, 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 like in his I face. I don't think I saw that one. What was the? <clears throat> she was interviewing him in the grass at his home, and mm. at this point, he had won. I want to say about ten primaries. And she's like, so you think you're going to win more primaries? And he's like, yeah, we're going to take it to the convention. And she goes, you're going to take it to the convention. <laughs> like in his face, just like that, so fake and obnoxious. And he mm -hmm. goes, yeah, we're going to take it to the convention. And she just kept going, okay, we'll be back after this. And she looks at the camera and goes, he said he's going to take it to the convention. Like that, and I was like, oh, hell no. I was about ready to jump through the screen. And guess what? We took it to the convention, bitch. But, I mean, we won 22 states. We won 46% of the vote. People act like mm -hmm. we were some kind of, right. you know, fringe candidate. No, including with the, the cheating and having MSM, like, not acknowledge us and you know, no money, you know, mm -hmm. and everything. And we got 46% of the vote. Mm -hmm. That's fucking historical. Mm -hmm. But, and I guess that's ultimately what the, the powers that be are scared of because all the yeah. candidates, like the people that we interview, which I have to say has been the best part of doing all this work. I bet you agree. I mean, it's just, they all, it's its pretty much Bernie's platform, all of them, but they're just really good people that are trying to change things, and and they're refusing to take corporate money, and it's, it's really inspiring, but I guess that, that is really scary to, to the establishment, because they're able to get, you know, in some cases, like 30% of the vote with almost no money, and 
total media blackout. So I guess they really have to come after the people like us that are interviewing yeah. them, people that are promoting them. So, but mm -hmm. I just hope that we don't have too much, again, the whole like dem exit, dem enter argument. I mean, for me personally, I can't, I think I'm pretty strongly in the dem exit category, but I still would look at each candidate, you know, and that to me is what matters, not the label. Now, knowing what I know about election integrity now, I think that pretty much any candidate running as a dem is if they make a lot of progress like Tim Canova did, you see what happened. Did you see my petition? Uh, or the petition, sorry, not my petition, the yeah, candidate, candidates with the contract mm -hmm. uh, petition. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I do want to talk about that for a sec, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Of um, course. So I hope anybody watching will sign. Um, let's see, I've got, we have 300 and some odd now. Um, but, you know, I just, I put a little note with it here. You know, I want to be clear that from, I'm not saying, uh, that Tim would have won. Um, but the thing is that we don't know. There's no trans transparency there at all. So, um, I will be actually delivering, um, this petition in person on Friday to... To Tim? No, 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 to, in D.C., to the committee. Oh, cool. Yep, it's, um... Miss Nina will be in D.C. Oh, really? What, Friday? Yeah. Well, I will be there. Um, let's see, we've tried to figure out. It's um, Zoe Lofgren, Jamie Raskin, um, but there's only one Republican, I think, so far on this committee. Um, but I don't really care. I think this is a nonpartisan issue, and they need to investigate it. Um, so anyway, mm -hmm. everybody can check it out, and please sign, and just understand it's, it's not about... It's really, in this case... I think Tim's kind of like the trailblazer that that fought and honestly said a lot. That what, what's your take on why? Why do you think Bernie didn't say much about? Well, okay, so I interviewed uh, Jeff Weaver, who was Bernie's yeah. campaign manager for thirty-two years, right? And I learned a lot. I didn't know before. Um, I was never so heartbroken in my entire life. I'm not going to say it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. I ripped my poster off the wall, and I was just like, I can't believe he did that. However, once I started putting it into perspective, I realized that, first of all, he's in a position that none of us have ever been in or will ever be in he's the only person period so for us to be like i would have is just not accurate because we don't know yeah. um i saw That's his true. face his face looked like he was destroyed um he cried the second he you know reneged or whatever you want to call it he turned his back and he walked right out the door mm -hmm. um he you know <clears throat> There, there's a few reasons why I believe in which have been confirmed to me. Um, number one, Hillary had agreed to now do free college, to now do $15 minimum wage, things like this. Mm -hmm. Had he stood up and said, look, you cheated, what would have happened? She would have went back on it. She would have said, it's null and void now. Would they have come out with, you know, with handcuffs and said, Hillary, you're out, Bernie, you're the nominee? No. no. He would have been made a laughing stock. He would have been called a sore loser. He would get attacked even more than he already does now. Mm -hmm. He's sexist for wanting to, you know, counter, you know, anything like that. It would have, they, he would have committed political suicide. Mm -hmm. End of story. He would have, he would have been chased out of the Senate. He would have no longer been the most popular politician and the um, the amendment king who gets to work with all of them. Mm -hmm. They would, I mean, she's such a big powerhouse. Everyone would turn on him. Everyone. Mm -hmm. And I think he knew that 
nothing would change if he spoke up. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The only thing that would change is he would have been made a laughing stock, and none of the things he fought for would have come to fruition. Mm -hmm. So I think when we think about it practically, and that's what you know Jeff confirmed and and also two other people on the mm -hmm. campaign who I spoke with, but also there were things going on behind the scenes that right. even I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. They were doing internal investigations and stuff mm -hmm. in multiple states. Oh, okay, that okay. they never published. Right, right. So well, there were things going yeah, on. Yeah, that's true. I did learn um, about um, a court case in, in Arizona. So there was, yes. yeah, there was some effort. But he wasn't well, vocal about it. Things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jeff you're right. Robert. I think we can't, we can't judge. We don't know what that's like to be in that position. And that's why I'm not ever going to vote shame anybody that decides to uh, d dem enter and or decides to still support Bernie and somebody you know gave me shit about saying I, I wrote I'm a former Sanders supporter and they re I shouldn't have worded it that way really but um, I just meant that I'm not actively you know supporting him now I'm not against him in any way but they took that and sort of said oh you said you're against it no I'm not saying that but I would just have to see what the what who else is what are the other choices are do you think he's really running Again, yes, do. I do. Okay. Um, well, one of the things that Jeff Weaver told me, which I had no idea about, is that, you know, when when people start running, they're forced to, for Dems, they're forced to sign a contract that states that they'll endorse the other person uh -huh. when they have the more higher delegates and stuff. Well, anyway, he said that he, he had, like, several hours and hours long meeting with Hillary Bernie and Hillary and her people. And he said one of his five things, he gave five things that said, even though the contract was signed, you do these five things, or I will not give you the endorsement, even though I signed the contract. And one of mm -hmm. them, Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to step down. Oh. That was Bernie. Oh, okay. All right. I had no idea. Well, I think he, I mean, look, Bernie is the reason all these candidates exist that mm -hmm. you and I have interviewed. I mean, I have no, no doubt about that. I think he definitely sparked the revolution. Um, you know, my, my biggest problem is some stuff about, you know, supporting Russian Ru sanctions against Russia, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I'm in no way in, uh, against Sanders. We'll see. But I wondered about, because I, personally, I don't think his age is, is an issue. Um, I think obviously he is young for his age, but I think that the public will, t so I, you know, will view it that way as a problem. So that's why I wondered if you, you really think I, I don't think, I, I mean, Pelosi's older than he is. Mm. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's older than mm, he is. Right. They have this thing where, they're they're grasping at anything they can criticize mm -hmm. him on. Essentially, I mean, his brother is eighty three years old and still serves in the UK mm -hmm. Green Party. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have good yeah. genes. Like okay. end of three, you know. Yeah. It's like, but I do think he's running, and I think what he's waiting for is, unfortunately, I really think Beto and Biden are going to enter this month, which, yeah, makes me want to cry in the fetal position. But I you think know, he's waiting till after they do. You know what? It looks to me like the Democrats decided, let's just have a big clown car like the Republicans did last time. And if we just have, like, all these awful candidates running, then it'll up the chances that, you know, one of them will be successful in the end somehow. Yeah. Although what's going to happen is that they're just going to end up splitting the votes like a bajillion different ways. And, you know, the, the candidates I've interviewed who have run against, like, 10, 11, 12 people, even the winner only gets, like, 20%. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're actually shooting themselves in the foot. My fear is that we're going to end up with way more than two people by the time the convention comes, and then mm -hmm. it goes to the superdelegates to decide 
who gets yeah, chosen. What, what so is the lake? Very well, be a plan. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then I think we're looking at Trump 2020. Absolutely. I so, wouldn't doubt it. And, Absolutely. And the people, that's a, certainly a chance. Yep. I think it's a very high likelihood. And, and I think it's just sad that this late in the game that the Democrats, the, the main establishment Democrats, that all they, they have still is, we're not Trump. And Trump is scary. And they're and I guess we're going to have to continue to deal with uh, more of the vote shaming and attacks on the grassroots candidates. So mm -hmm. it's going to be our job to give them airtime and, and do good interviews and, and help them get you know, the word out that they're for the people, right? Have you um, have you um, talked to a lot of candidates that are are planning to run again that were, ran before that they're running again in twenty twenty? Um, I think talked to Sima Hernandez. Yeah. Um, I had her on again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she's on fire. She's ready to go. She is ready. <laughs> and and she JM, is on. yeah, JM um, was on too. Yeah, I yeah, 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 JM on. We did a a. a a show about, um, I wanted to interview people of color on Kamala's stance on, mm -hmm. on you know, her for-profit prison mm -hmm. history and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And I wanted to, you know, I find it egregious, but I'm white. I want to, you know, you see a lot of African Americans, like, disgusted with her. And I wanted to get that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so he came on and we had a really good discussion about that. Um but yeah, I interviewed a really great guy on Friday, um, Stephen Smith. He's mm -hmm. running for governor of West Virginia. Oh, okay. I absolutely suggest interviewing him. He is amazing. Like, I was just listening to him like, holy shit, yes. Like, his parents were humanitarians and um, helped immigrants and everything that he... Um, he went to Harvard and started this whole thing on campus where he fed like millions of children breakfast and oh, just, wow. I mean, it, he's just, he's like, he's just freaking amazing. <laughs> and isn't that what really counteracts all the nastiness that we encounter all the time is just hearing from these candidates. But... I'm going to talk about this till I'm blue in the face and people, it's a boring subject. It's dry and hard to understand all this stuff about the voting machines and all the, but we've got to fight this because I just have to mention, um, you know, towards the end of, uh, right before the election, um, all I could really recommend to candidates was put in a public records request. Well, as you'll read about, if you see the petition, um, they will stonewall you on that. Um, they will come up with all kinds of different ways to charge you for what should be public information. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're, that's what we're up against. And I don't know how, how we're going to combat that other than to hopefully get each candidate um, on board with finding out what's going on in their district. Like what voting machines do they have? And what can we do to start becoming more educated on that? Because I think, you know, the whole country, we just go to the, we go to vote. We don't know anything about what, who owns the machines and, and what's really going on. And then these candidates, they're just sitting there waiting for the results. And like in Tim's case, I mean, nobody, it was, did you see any of that? How, what happened was there's this Florida rule that allows for basically for there to be, blanks in all the columns so you can't see where any anything comes from yeah. so yeah a month mm -hmm. after the election they finally released something on an excel like excel sheet but it's not there's nothing trackable about it you can't mm -hmm. so we're all just yeah, in the dark was, um, i've had tim on my show three times and i was the first interview he gave ah, that's after right. snipes was uh let go and mm -hmm. um after his he it was like the day after he announced the lawsuit um so i mean it's just i don't even know how he's how he keeps going i just don't because i feel defeated even just 
thinking about it. Mm -hmm. it. It's depressing. I'll be honest. I found it really hard to try to get excited about candidates again, knowing what they're up mm -hmm. against. But I think we have a choice. We either go away and just let it, let it go and never have free and fair elections and never get all of this change that all these wonderful candidates could bring or we keep fighting it. So I'm going to be doing something soon with the guy that's come up with um, a system and I linked it um, everywhere I posted the um, petition on Facebook. There's a link at the bottom um, to his uh, voting system and it's basically it's paper ballots and they're in a locked clear box at each precinct. Um, and he's figured out a way to do this, and it's going to be like fifty grand. So all this, like, is this? Um, his name is John Papa, and he we're going to do something um, pretty soon. He worked with other people in the election integrity community to I come think, up with this yeah, system. I think I know exactly who you're talking about. And so we're going to do. He wants to um, do a presentation. We kind of went over it, but it wasn't real concise. So we're going to do a presentation and hope to. Just get the word out about it. I mean, it would it would save a ton of money too. I mean, these voting machine manufacturers they're they're making t tons of money off of this. And they give some of it to Hillary. Uh -huh. And and do you know about the uh, the closed door meetings between DHS and the yeah mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah. So I've been trying you know spread the word about that a lot, but. I mean, we have to change this, and this is not a Republican or Democrat thing. It's got to be changed, because mm -hmm. without election integrity, we don't have democracy. So I'm hoping right. we're going to actually add something on the candidates with the contract, um, on the actual contract about election integrity. Soon. Awesome. So, awesome. So I think everybody's kind of had to take a little bit of a break, maybe, right, the candidates? But I'm sure it will be ramping up soon, and I think that, you know, people get an early start now. I think some of them that are running again, they already have name recognition in their communities. Mm -hmm. And hopefully people like us can give them more airtime, right? Hell yeah. So we'll have, maybe we'll, we'll coordinate on some stuff in the future, maybe some, like, roundtables and oh, yeah. with candidates. So, For sure. Okay, well, thanks so much, Joy, and again, I just, I'm kind of sorry to have to do what we did, but I had to say something about about these attacks, and I think that, you know, we have to call it out. We expect Absolutely. better from people that are supposed to be professionals and supposed to be fighting for good things. Don't go around, attack, you know, this isn't high school. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having yeah, me on. So and thanks for, for helping Tim and, and doing everything else as well. Yep. It's just something in, in us we can't stop, right? Got to keep doing it. That's for damn sure. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, you don't know how. <laughs> thank you so much, Joy. Great to talk to Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Right. You too. Okay. Take care. You too. Good night. <laughs>